5.5 and 5.6, Modeling Periodic Functions. Example 1, the height h in meters above the ground of a rider on a Ferris wheel after t seconds can be modeled by the sine function h at t equals 10 sine 3 t minus 30 plus 12. And that 3, folks, has a degree sign. There we go. Determine the maximum and minimum heights of the rider above the ground, the height of the rider after 30 seconds, and the time required to complete one revolution. All right, so we need to answer these questions, and we have to be able to answer them and make sure we cover all the parts. So my recommendation is, once you have an a question, a word problem such as this, make sure that you check off each piece that you have answered them once you've answered them. So the first part, you need to find, well, one of the things we need to find is the maximum minimum. So the maximum can be determined by taking the C value and adding the A value, an absolute A. So in this case, our A is positive, so 12 plus 10 is going to be 22, and that's 22 meters high, and the minimum is C minus the absolute of A, which is 2 meters. So we've covered the maximum minimum, that's done. Next piece is the height of the rider after 30 seconds. So we sub t equals 30 into the equation. h at 30 equals 10 sine 3, all of that. And now very important when we plug this in, 30 minus 30 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. Sine of 0, if we look on this graph, sine of 0, sine when sine of 0 is 0. So that's, this whole thing will be 0, times 10 is 0, plus 12 is h at 30 is equal to 12. So at 12 meters, the, at 30 seconds, the rider reaches a height of 12 meters. And finally, the time required to complete one revolution. Well, to complete one revolution means that we need to complete one period. How do we calculate the period? Well, that's 360 over three degrees. Notice that it's three degrees here so that we can cancel the degrees and make it a new unit. In our case, the unit is going to be in seconds. 360 degrees divided by three degrees is 120 seconds. So we would answer the following question in a therefore statement answering all the different pieces to complete the revolution. Okay, um, to complete the revolution, the height of the writer after 30 seconds, the minimum and maximum values, so all of those points. We would do a therefore statement as our final, final, final statement. Because we started with words, folks, we must end with words. Now be careful, I may ask you time required, how many, how many minutes is required, so you would convert this to minutes. All right, folks, moving forwards, here's another example. The population of prey in a predator-prey relation is shown. Time is in years since 1985. So since 1985, this is the population prey of prey in a predator-prey relation. And you're asked to determine the equation and identify the variables in the question. Okay, so we need to find the equation of this graph. To find the equation, First thing we should do is trace a cycle. Here's a cycle, a really nice one, where we do the middle, starting here, going to the top, coming back to the middle again. How do we know that's a middle? Don't forget, maximum minus the minimum divided by 2, and the middle will be here. That's at 550. So, our P at T is the population of the prey since 1985, and t is the time in years since 1985. So the p at t equation is going to be a sine curve, because this is the trace that we did, and we need to fill in the proper pieces of information. Our amplitude, which is 850, minus 250 divided by 2. That gives us 300, so we put our 300 in the front. 
We will also calculate the C value, which is 850 plus 250 divided by 2, and that will give us 550, and we can put those values here, 300 for A and plus 550 for our C value. Now, we need to calculate our K and our D. Our D will begin where our sine curve starts, that will be our D value. So our D value here is going to be 6. So we have T minus 6 will fit in here. And our so that's right 6. So we put T minus 6 here and moved right 6. And then well, we're going to calculate the period. The period here in years goes from five, 6 to 12. From 6 to 12, the period is 6 years. So 360 degrees divided by something k is equal to 6 years. We replace the period with the word 6 years. So we need to what find out how many degrees k is to give us 6. And that answer is 60 degrees. k years is equal to 60 degrees. So that's the number that will go here, 60 degrees. This, folks, is the equation that represents this population of the prey. All right, now, what if we had to do the cosine equation? What would that be? Well, it would have the same A, same K, same C. The only difference is our D value. And remember, to calculate that, to go from the green to the blue, is a quarter turn to the right. So from green to blue, we have to move another quarter turn to the right. A quarter of the period, the period is six years, a quarter of that is 1.5. So we would actually move it to P at T is equal to, now don't forget, this was our sine value and we want to make it a cosine equation. So our cosine equation is going to be, here we go, cos, and we just keep the same A and C, same K. The only difference is in here. What will it be? Well, it will be minus a quarter turn. So we take the value of 6 and take a quarter of the turn. A quarter of 6 is 1.5. So we're going to move to the right 7.5. Now, if you look very carefully, if you multiply 60 times 1.5, that extra right movement of 1.5, we will get 90 degrees in total. So we will actually have moved a total of another 90 degrees, a quarter turn, to give us that value. Interesting, eh? All right, next example, example number three. What I want you to do with example number three, and a lot of you who are continuing to watch this video, well, notice that I have an extension to this. This is something that may, it was covered with a few students, but not all. And I want everyone to have at least seen this part. So determine three x-intercepts for each of the following. A, y equals 3 cos, 3 x minus 30 degrees. And I want you to find the x-intercepts for this. So how do we find the x-intercept? X-intercept means that y is equal to 0. So we set y equal to 0. 0 equals 3 cos 3 x minus 30 degrees. Now, we, we divide by 3, divide by this 3 over, we still get 0 equals cosine of 3 x minus 30 degrees. Now, I could do the cos inverse of 0 and I get the answer of 90. Now I want you to understand that cosine actually has two x-intercepts. So let's draw out our basic cosine function. And note that we have one x-intercept right here, okay, one x-intercept right here, and another x-intercept right here. So one here and one here. Those two x-intercepts, you could only, use, when you use the calculator to find the cos inverse, would only give you one of them, but you have to recognize there are two possible values, one at 90 and the other one at 270. So you need both of these values. So cosine of something equals zero at 90 and 270. So cosine of 90 is equal to cosine of 3x minus 30 degrees, 
Well, if cos and cos, we can drop both coses, folks, and we get 90 degrees is equal to 3 times x minus 30. Divide both sides by 3, you get x, uh, 30 equals x minus 30. That means x is equal to 60 degrees. Now, that is the one that would be the first one on its way down. The second one would be on its way up. So we set it at cos 270 is equal to cosine of 3x minus 30. Whoops, let's go back a second. That's too much right there. Okay, so one more time. Let's just stop for a second. Let's just catch our breath. So we have x equals 60 degrees is one of the values. That would be the first one on the way down. We need to find the one on the way up. So we set it equal. Drop the cosines, folks. And this is what we get. Once we do that... We divide both sides by 3, get 90 degrees is equal to x minus 30. That means that x is equal to 120. Now what's important is I want three x-intercepts. So when's the next one? Well, folks, we can actually calculate the next one by adding a period. That's right. One period away will repeat the same value of y equals 0. One period away from 120 will also equal... Uh, when will also be a value when y is equal to zero. So, what our what are our x-intercepts? Keep in mind, the period here, folks, is 120 degrees because three is your k value, and 360 divided by three is 120. So, 120 is our period, and we can add 120 to here and 120 here to find our x-intercepts. So, I'm going to give you a bunch of them. Here we go. The x-intercepts are as follows, 60 degrees, 0, 120 degrees, 0, and add 120, we get 180 degrees, 0, add 120, so we added 120 to this one, we can add 120 to that one to get 240 degrees and 0, and basically you just keep adding 120 degrees a period each time to calculate all the possible x-intercepts until basically you run out of whatever the determination factor is up here, for example, within a certain domain. All right, one, let's try one more with sine. Let's determine x-intercepts when y equals a sine function. So again, we do the same thing as we did before. We set y equals 0. 0 is equal to 5 sine 2x minus 60 degrees minus 5. Now, this time we have a c value. We bring it over, it becomes 5 equals 5 sine 2x minus 60 degrees. Then we divide by 5 and we get 1 is equal to sine 2x minus 60. So it wasn't the same as the other one where it equals 0. Unfortunately for us, it actually equals a number. Well, fortunately for us, 1 can easily be determined by looking at the basic sine graph. Here's our basic sine graph right here, folks. Where does it equal 1? That's right here. At what value is it equal to 1? Well, that's at, you guessed it, 90 degrees. So at 90 degrees, the sine function is equal to 1. That means sine of 90 is equal to the sine of 2x minus 60 degrees. Well, we can drop the sines and get 90 is equal to 2x minus 60 degrees. Divide both sides by 2. And then what we're going to do is add the 60 to get 105 degrees. So at x equals 105 degrees. Now, if ever you're questioning these values, you could always plug this number into here. What will happen is you will have at 105 minus 60 is 45. 45 times 2 is 90. Sine of 90 is actually 0. Times 5 is, sorry, sine of 90 is 1. I apologize. Sine of 90 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5, minus 5 gives us 0. Wow, that's right, folks. We can plug the value back into the equation if ever you're doubting what it is. So x is equal to 105 degrees. Is there another time that sine is equal to 1? And the answer is no, there's only 1. So what we'll do now is add the period. What is the period of this function? Well, it is 360 divided by the k value, which is 2. So the period repeats itself every 180 degrees. So we can do our therefore statement. Therefore, the x-intercepts are the following. 
105 degrees and 0, 285 degrees and 0, 390 degrees and 0. Now you might be asking, how do we get 390? Well, don't forget, you add 180 each time. So I'm adding 180 degrees to here. When I add 180, I get, whoop, that might not be right. Let's just check. That might not be right, folks. So we're just going to fix that for a second. Oops, sorry, folks. That's This is what the answer is. It's 465 degrees and 0. The reason why is we have to add 180 from here, and 285 plus 180 gives us 465 degrees and 0. If we had plugged this in, we will actually get a number up here that will equal the value we want. But if I had plugged in 390 up here, we definitely would not have gotten that value, which would have been a boo-boo. All right, folks. And other examples of this are when we were to go one subtract 180. So we could take 108, 105 degrees and subtract 180, and we'll get negative 75 degrees and 0. And then we could subtract 180 again, and that should give us negative 255 degrees and 0. And if you were to subtract 180 again, you could get another value. But the idea is that we need to have three x-intercepts, and usually the question like this asks us within a certain domain. But you could just find three if it just asks you for three. All right, folks, that's the end of the video. Have a numerical day. Take care.